you not afraid about being blackballed again? These are some power people. What do you mean again? These people are not powerful. Satan can't create anything. You know what the number one job of somebody that sold their soul in Hollywood is? What? Is to act like it didn't happen. It, it took people far more courageous than I was who stood together, spoke their truth, and, um, and inspired me to do the same. Cat Williams is regarded by many as one of the funniest comics of his generation. He's known for his unfiltered humor, energy, and blockbuster stand-up specials. Despite his ranking among Hollywood's greats, however, Williams hasn't received the same mainstream push that his contemporaries have. He doesn't star in blockbuster movies like Kevin Hart, and you'll rarely catch Williams sponsoring in a commercial. For a while, some thought this meant Williams was blackballed from the industry. But in a recent interview with Shannon Sharp, Cat revealed why he is isn't in the good books of the industry. Williams, known for his unapologetic style and fearless commentary, delved into the dynamics of Hollywood and the comedy industry. His statements brought attention to Kevin Hart's rapid rise to stardom and questioned the authenticity of the comedic landscape. Cat Williams began by highlighting the astonishing trajectory of Kevin Hart's career in Hollywood by first questioning the unprecedented speed with which Hart achieved success. In 15 years in Hollywood, no one in Hollywood has a memory of going to a sold-out Kevin Hart show, there being a line for him ever getting a standing ovation at any well, comedy club. Williams went on and suggested that Hart's rapid ascent was unusual and posed the question of whether Hart had truly paid his dues in the competitive world of stand-up comedy. The comedian emphasized the significance of the journey and questioned whether Hart's seemingly instant success was indicative of a different narrative. He already had his deals when he got here. Have we heard of a comedian that came to L.A. and in his first year in L.A. he had his own sitcom on network television and had his own movie called Soul Plane that he was leading? No. In the interview, Cat Williams introduced the term plant to describe someone who seemingly appears out of nowhere and attains success without the traditional struggles that comedians often face and then claims they are self-made. Williams also went further to reveal the things that Kevin Hart and other comedians have done in order to be accepted as A-list celebrities. He revealed that he had a tense encounter with Martin Lawrence, who tried to make him wear a dress for a movie role. Williams said that he was offered a part in Lawrence's film Big Mama's House 2, but he turned it down when he found out that he had to dress up as a woman. He claimed that Lawrence was not happy with his decision and tried to pressure him into doing it. He said, come on, man, it's just comedy. It's not that serious. It's not like you're really a woman. I said, no, man, I'm not doing it. I have principles and I have dignity. I don't want to disrespect myself or my people. He said, well, you're missing out on a big opportunity. You could be a star. I said, I'm already a star. I don't need to wear a dress to be funny. Williams said that he respects Lawrence as a comedian and an actor, but he does not agree with his choice of wearing dresses for laughs. He said that he believes that Hollywood has an agenda to emasculate black men and make them look weak and foolish. I'm not saying that every black man who wears a dress is selling out, but I'm saying that there is a pattern and a purpose behind it. They want to make us look like clowns and buffoons. They want to take away our masculinity and our power. They want to make us lose our identity and our self-respect. Williams said that he is not afraid to speak his mind and stand up for what he believes in, even if it means losing some fans or some money. He said that he is proud of who he is and what he does and will never compromise his integrity for fame or fortune. I'm not here to please everybody. I'm here to tell the truth and make people laugh. I'm here to be myself and be original. I'm here to be Cat Williams, not somebody else's puppet. Well, it appears Kat's words were not confined to the black community only, because actor Brendan Fraser, just like Kat, has experienced the shady side of Hollywood after refusing to conform to its elite's demands. For context, Brendan Fraser seemed to be everywhere at the turn of the millennium. He was headlining goofy kids' adventure comedies, leading a mainstream franchise, and nabbing roles in critically favorable films. When you put it all together, Fraser has one of the most impressive bodies of work in Hollywood, from his critically acclaimed roles in School Ties and Gods and Monsters, running all the way through mega hits such as The Mummy and Journey to the Center of the Earth. Simply put, we love Brendan Fraser, but his star power has dulled over the years, leading many to wonder, why is Hollywood giving Fraser the cold shoulder? You see, Fraser's bankability as a big name was called into question early on in his rise to fame. While the actor enjoyed some commercial successes, such as George of the Jungle, 1997, and The Mummy, 1999, 
He also suffered some serious stinkers at the same time, like Blast from the Past, 1999, and Dudley Do Right, 1999, both of which had critics laughing for all the wrong reasons and certainly didn't draw much audience interest. The Mummy Returns in 2001 gave him some much-needed momentum in the right direction, and he went on to nab a role in the critically favored crash in 2005 before jumping into another action-adventure realm in Journey to the Center of the Earth in 2008. But after that, his inability to drum up an audience seriously damaged his leading man reputation. Fraser's appeal as the lovable doofus in George of the Jungle didn't quite translate to other franchise hopeful films. Not only did Dudley do right do wrong, but Monkey Bone was a dissed and dismissed non-starter, and perhaps most tellingly, his attempt to lead a live-action take on the Looney Tunes animated world sputtered out with a lackluster reception to Looney Tunes, back in action. Fraser gave the goofball game that had made him a name one more go with Furry Vengeance, but that movie was a disaster on all fronts and solidified the fact that Fraser's silly screen demeanor just wasn't getting kids to the ticket booths anymore. While the first Mummy sequel debuted soon after the original installment and successfully capitalized on the excavation adventure craze, the third movie was slow going despite the successes of the first two films. By the time The Mummy, Tomb of the Dragon Emperor rolled along, audiences were over it and had moved on to other offerings of its ilk, such as Nicolas Cage's National Treasure movies. The Mummy 3 didn't exactly bomb, but its domestic receipts were less than either of its predecessors and lead to the franchise being left to decay, until Fraser was replaced by Tom Cruise for the disappointing 2017 reboot. Once the Mummy franchise was clearly dead, Fraser had a real chance at following his journey to the center of the Earth's success into a new franchise land, but he held out on signing on for Journey 2, the mysterious island out of loyalty to the first installment's director, Eric Brevig, who was tied up finishing another project at the studio's desired time of production. Rather than waiting on either party, the studio replaced the director and brought in Dwayne The Rock Johnson to take Fraser's place, and the film did just fine without them, with several sequels expected to follow. Celebs becoming part of the meme machine can be a popularity boon, but for Fraser, his internet infamy was more awkward and unsettling than endearing. At the 2010 Golden Globes, he was captured in a moment of exuberance that was so unusually enthusiastic, it spawned a series of video riffs that poked fun at his finger-gunning fun and proved that the comedic actor was funnier in impromptu moments like this than in most of his movies. Yikes! In a GQ story published in February 2018, a 49-year-old Fraser opened up for the first time about alleged harassment that changed the course of his personal and professional life and further isolated him from the Hollywood scene. The actor claims he was mortified after being groped at a luncheon in 2003 by Philip Burke, former president of the Hollywood Foreign Press Association. The unfortunate experience left Fraser feeling ostracized. I felt like someone had thrown invisible paint on me, he said, adding, it made me feel reclusive. In my mind at least, something had been taken away from me. Though he didn't go public with the accusation, Fraser did notify the HFPA, which he believes may have contributed to his career downturn. I don't know if this curried disfavor with the group, with the HFPA, he said, but the silence was deafening. Burke told GQ that Fraser's version of the incident was a total fabrication. He reportedly sent the actor an apology letter, but admitted no wrongdoing, adding that Fraser's career declined through no fault of ours. Fraser disagreed. The phone does stop ringing in your career, and you start asking yourself why. There's many reasons, but was this one of them? I think it was, he said. Not long after the stunning admissions he made in the aforementioned GQ interview, Fraser told E! News that he was ready to move on. Asked whether the revealing interview was cathartic, Fraser said, No, I just spoke my truth. A lot can happen, and it's important to unburden yourself with the things you just don't need anymore, the Crash star said while speaking to E! at FX's annual All-Star Party. I can go forward now and I feel good that I was inspired by others with courage and I was able to speak what I needed to say, and it's a new time. It seems Fraser had already taken the time to fully process the anguish of his situation before going public. His remarks also indicate that in combination with his allegation that he was the subject of blackballing, he also intentionally shrank away from the spotlight as a result of the incident until he was emboldened by the ongoing hash me too and hash times up movements. It's a new era and I think some change that's good is going to come about, Fraser said of adding his voice and experience to the movements. I'm optimistic. I'm hopeful.
After speaking out about the alleged groping, Fraser seemed ready to turn the page. But then the HFPA conducted a private investigation and asked him to sign off on a joint statement that cleared Burke of wrongdoing and framed the whole incident as a joke and not a S advance, according to GQ. Fraser declined. I don't get the joke, he told the mag. He requested the full report from the investigation rather than the summary he was provided. The HFPA would not give Fraser the full report, which prompted even more skepticism from the actor. Now, he not only wants Burke to step down, but he also wants to help dismantle what he calls the unwritten system that kept him and so many other victims of S assault and harassment quiet in the interest of powerful entities. I want to end this episode, this chapter, in my own life and career and move on, just as I'm hopeful that others will be able to in years to come," Fraser said. In a statement to GQ, the HFPA once again condemned the encounter between Burke and Fraser as inappropriate, but reiterated the findings of its investigation. When the getting is good, there's no business like show business, but if and when the Hollywood freeze-out process does begin, it can be pretty hard to thaw out a career. And it's even harder to stop the financial bleed that comes with professional injury. Brendan Fraser has paid quite literally for all his former movie star glory. Fraser and actress Afton Smith, with whom he has three sons, wed in 1998, announced their divorce in 2007 and reached a settlement for alimony and child support in 2009. However, the situation turned publicly ugly between them in 2013 when, as his career momentum slowed, Fraser petitioned for a reduction of his reported $900,000 a year payment schedule to Smith. She claimed he'd hidden funds and future film deals at the time of their settlement, but Fraser reasoned that he expected to make no money whatsoever, as in zero dollars, in the future, and would be relying on the assets he'd earned prior to the petition for payments, due to unspecific medical issues which affected his workflow. According to some sources, the setback Fraser was referring to in his aforementioned petition was a back injury he sustained while attempting to clear away yard debris from Hurricane Sandy with a chainsaw. His injury reportedly even required corrective surgery and intense physical therapy, and may prevent him from being able to do his own stunt work, as he had in prior productions. If true, that would support his claim that medical concerns could limit his future earning potential. In December 2016, Brendan Fraser appeared on AOL's Build series to discuss his role as Gunther the Prison Guard in Season 3 of Showtime's The Affair. His appearance on the Q&A session went viral for all the wrong reasons. Viewers of the segment remarked at how melancholy the actor appeared while discussing his career. If there was any lingering doubt that Fraser's personal and financial setbacks, combined with his lessening work opportunities, was taking a toll on the actor, that interview was considered proof that he was as woebegotten about his pratfalls as expected, if not more. In February 2018, the actor talked about that uncomfortable appearance. As it turns out, what was behind the sad Brendan Fraser meme was sadness, reported GQ. His mother had died of cancer just days before the interview. Fraser said he was grieving, coming to terms with a lot of significant life changes, and also simply struggling with the show's format, which was a new kind of press for him. I was going through things that mold and shape you in ways that you're not ready for until you go through them, he told the magazine. After the sad Brendan Fraser video went viral, Fraser fans orchestrated a Change.org petition addressed to Netflix, HBO, Showtime, and other networks to encourage those companies to consider him for future opportunities. More than 46,000 signatures had been collected by the time of this writing. Brendan has been in multiple interviews recently and has appeared to be very down and out, the petition said. And us loyal fans feel like we are obliged to help him out in any way possible. Please help us get Brendan back on his feet again, we miss him. Fraser also spoke with Vanity Fair about his return to mainstream projects, such as the FX series Trust, more on that in a moment, telling the mag, It's satisfying to take the time off that I have for various reasons, and to come back under the wing of so many amazing creatives. In other words, while he faced a difficult ordeal with the HFPA incident, perhaps Fraser's time out from Tinseltown wasn't all that terrible. The best was yet to come. Momentum means a lot in Hollywood, especially when it comes to a good comeback story. Fraser is now coming back stronger than ever, having just scooped his first ever Oscar a few months ago for his turn in The Whale. The Oscar goes to... Brendan Fraser. The Whale! 
tearing up, he said he was so grateful for the award, coming on stage and saying, so this is what the multiverse looks like. I thank the Academy for this honor, Darren Aronofsky for throwing me a creative lifeline and hauling me aboard the good ship The Whale. Addressing his fellow Best Actor nominees, he said actors laid their whale-sized hearts bare, saying it was his honor to be named alongside them in this category. Fraser went on, I want to tell you that only whales can swim at the depths of the talent of Hong Chao. I started in this business 30 years ago. There was a facility that that I didn't appreciate at the time until it stopped. He added, I just want to say thank you for this acknowledgement because it could not be done without my cast. The resurgence of Brendan Fraser's career has continued as one of the most beloved actors in Hollywood has appeared in another hit movie. He followed up his Oscar win with an appearance in Martin Scorsese's recently released K of the Flower Moon. However, his performance has been one of the more divisive parts of the film with the actor receiving some backlash on social media. Fraser, who plays lawyer W.S. Hamilton in K of the Flower Moon, has been slated by some who've called his performance baffling and complained that it seems cartoonish in an otherwise very serious film. While there have been some slating Fraser for his performance, many others have stepped in to defend him as great, and the only vote of confidence an actor really needs is the nod of approval from their director. In this regard, he's passed with flying colors, as Scorsese spoke glowingly of Fraser's perfect performance in the film and described the actor as just great to work with. We thought he'd be great for the lawyer and I admired his work over the years, Scorsese said of Fraser joining K of the Flower Moon. He actually came in for I think a couple of weeks on the picture, particularly when it was in our later shoot. We had a really good time working together, particularly with Leo, particularly in the scene where he says, they're putting a noose around your neck, he's saving you dumb boy. Really for us, when we heard that he brought the whole scene down on Leo, it was perfect. And had that girth, he's big in the frame at that time. He's a wonderful actor, and he was just great to work with. Scorsese spoke in glowing terms of several of K of the Flower Moon's major stars. While he's certainly no stranger to working with Robert De Niro and Leonardo DiCaprio, Scorsese said that Lily Gladstone had what he called a perfect cinema face. He said, she could be saying nothing, but you feel everything going on behind her eyes and in the positioning of her face when she moves. But there's so much going on inside of her, and it's reflected in a very still way. K of the Flower Moon is based on a non-fiction book of the same name which was published in 2017 that recounts the true story of a series of murders of Osage Native Americans for the rights to oil beneath Oklahoma. Scorsese said the relationship between Molly and Ernest was the real core of the picture and found that his biggest challenge when making K of the Flower Moon was balancing the emotional complexity of the relationship. Another celebrity who is seemingly on Fraser's side is Dwayne Johnson. Johnson happened to reunite with Fraser during the 2023 Oscars, and it was a wonderful full circle moment. While it's hard to remember a time when Johnson wasn't famous, we must not forget that The Rock was the first WWE superstar to truly break through into Hollywood, in a big way, and he has thanked Fraser for welcoming him with open arms in his first movie role in the 2001 sequel, The Mummy Returns. Taking to Instagram, Johnson wrote, Very cool full circle moment here with my longtime buddy Brendan Fraser and his sons. My very first film of my Hollywood career was The Mummy Returns, which Brendan was the star. Lots of critics and cynics betting against me at that time, but Brendan welcomed me with open arms and was very supportive. I never forget kind people. Now years later, Brendan wins his Oscar for Best Actor in The Whale, and I went on to become famous for wearing a fanny pack. Congratulations, brother. Enjoy your flowers. In any case, Fraser's career was promising, long even before his box office success in George of the Jungle. Fraser's journey began on December 3, 1968, in Indianapolis, Indiana, where he was born to Carol Mary and Peter Fraser, both hailing from Canada. The youngest among four sons, Fraser's roots were deeply intertwined with his family's diverse heritage. Irish, Scottish, German, Czech, and French-Canadian. His upbringing was marked by constant relocation, taking him from the shores of Eureka, California, to the vibrant cities of Seattle, Ottawa, and beyond, even venturing overseas to the Netherlands and Switzerland. Educated at Upper Canada College in Toronto, Fraser's path to stardom was shaped by a serendipitous encounter during a family vacation in London. It was there, in the dazzling lights of the West End, that he found himself captivated by the magic of theater, igniting a passion for acting that would define his future. Following his graduation from Seattle's Cornish College of the Arts in 1990, Fraser initially set his sights on furthering his studies in New York City. However, fate intervened as he embarked on a journey to Hollywood, 
ultimately deciding to pursue his dreams in the world of film. Fraser's cinematic debut came in 1991 with a modest role in Dogfight, setting the stage for his ascent to fame. His breakthrough arrived the following year with Encino Man, a quirky comedy where he portrayed a thawed-out caveman navigating the modern world. This role not only showcased Fraser's comedic prowess but also cultivated a devoted fan base. Despite encountering setbacks with box office disappointments like with honors and airheads, Fraser's dedication to his craft remained unwavering. His versatility as an actor was showcased in diverse projects, from confronting societal issues in school ties to making memorable cameos in popular films of the era. As Fraser's career continued to evolve, his talent and charisma would solidify his status as a beloved figure in Hollywood, leaving an indelible mark on the entertainment industry for years to come. Brendan Fraser has indeed come a long way, and with the way things are going, fans believe he has a long and successful journey ahead of him. Anyway, that's it for this video, folks. Bye.